So bloom filters are this really cool idea. Uh, we'll not keep a full hash table, we'll sort of keep a hash set, we'll keep one bit for every element, we'll keep a table. And again, remember the key idea, if you want to add a string, say, to uh, the table, you don't just sort of say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and uh, calculate a, an index, take that mod the table size, and just add it to that bucket. I'm only going to set a bit, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set a bit according to a hash function h1. I'm going to have another hash function h2, and I'll go ahead and set a bit in the table for that, and then so I'm adding ibarl into the table. I'll I'll hash it with one function, set a bit, hash it with some other function. I'm just, I have a couple of randomly made up examples here. Uh, hash it with a second function, set that bit in the table um, if I have 100 bits, and hash it with a third function. <clears throat> okay, and every time I get a new string to add to my set, I go ahead and set three bits in the table. Some of them might already be set by something else. Yeah, so uh, here's the weird thing about Bloom filters. They're probabilistic. They can give a wrong answer uh, sometimes. They can give a false positive in the sense that uh, you've later you come by and say, hey, is, is Ibarland in the table? And I'll look up H1 of Ibarland and look there in the table, H2 of Ibarland, H3 of Ibarland, I'll look at those indices. Yeah, they're all set. I'll say Ibarland was in the set. Okay, cool. And maybe it was. Maybe that's a true positive result. Um, and if I'd give a, but somebody else, I could add a bunch of things to the set. I add Ibarland, I add Radford, I add whoop to do add all those strings to the table, I get a bunch of bits set in there. Then somebody says, hey, is, is the string Bartok, is that set in the table? Um, and so I'll go and look at H1 of Bartok, and maybe that bit is set. Maybe that's what H3 of Ibarland had set. And I'm like, okay, well, what about H2 of Bartok? And maybe, yeah, maybe that bit had been set by uh, H1 of whoop to do And uh, hey, well, what about H3 of Bartok? Is that bit set? And maybe it had been set by, again, by something else that had been entered previously. Uh, and I'll come back and say, yeah, Bartok was in the set, even though Bartok's not there. So, how sad. Um, so, yeah, I'm giving a false positive. By the way, if I ever give a negative, it's going to be a true negative. So... Um, okay, so that's the Bloom filter, and we have a false positive, and our question was, how likely is a false positive? I gave a rule of thumb, hey, use the number of bits to be maybe 10 times more than the things you plan to add to the table. And of course, use them only in a situation where you can tolerate a fault, an occasional false positive. Um, so yeah, rule of thumb, if you use three hash functions and you have your the ratio m to n is, or n to m is 1 to 10, um, where m is your table size, n will be the number of things in the table. You have to sort of guess in the future how many things you'll think you'll have in there. And you know, k will be our number of hash functions. We're using k equal 3. I was using, making up 100 as my table size before. Uh, if n over m uh, is about uh, 1 tenth and k is 3, you get about a 1% false positive rate. So, okay. Um, so let's just, but where do I pull that from? <laughs> I just made up that number, right? Well, where do we get that number from? Let's go ahead and calculate it, and it's not too bad. We use the basic things about probabilities we just reviewed in that other video, uh, and in particular we use this idea that uh, 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x power. If x is large, that will give us e. We're going to use that fact. So, Here's our, uh, what we want to do. Um, okay, first of all, I'm going to say, hey, what is the bit? I have it written down here, but I'll, I'll try to write it on paper as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and stage this up. But first, I'm going to say, hey, look at a certain bit of the table. What was the probability that it isn't set by H1 of Ibarland? Okay, and then we'll say, hey, uh, look at a certain bit and say, hey, what's the probability that wasn't set by H1, H2, or H3 of Ibarland? So I take the, the and over uh, H1, H2, and H3 of some particular string S0. I'm using S0 to indicate a, a fixed string. Once we have uh, those two, then it'll be easy to get the probability that a certain bit isn't set by, well, <laughs> um, 
and over a whole bunch of strings, okay? That, hey, that uh, S1 didn't set in any of the bits, or look at one bit, certain bit. S1, all the bits set by S1 didn't hit this one, and all the bits set by S2 didn't hit this one, and all the bits hit by S3 didn't hit this one. We're going to save that up. We're going to calculate each of these three things. And once we have that, we'll know what the probability um, that, hey, that uh, all three bits are one by dumb luck, perhaps. Okay, so that's going to give us our probability of false positive. Let's work through the numbers. Let's go back and start with a uh, very simple thing. What is the probability that a certain bit isn't set by H1 of I borrowed? And that's going to be uh, pretty clear. We're going to have, I mean, there's M locations in the table. Um, H1 of I borrowed set one of those bits, one out of M. We're going to assume uniformity here. Uh, equally likely that H1 of I borrowed set any of the, the entries in the table. Um, we're going to assume all our stuff is equally like all our hash functions are good and independent. May not be a realistic assumption, but close enough in practice. Okay, so that's the probability that one bit is not set by one of the hash functions on one string we entered. So uh, next step, what is the probability that a certain bit isn't set by all three of the hash functions? Well, we, we know that. It's like, well, it wasn't set by the first hash function and it wasn't set by the second hash function, and it wasn't set by the third. These are all independent, we're assuming. So it will be uh, three, this would be cubed if we had three hash functions. In general, if we have k hash functions, um, yeah, okay, that's the probability that, uh, that one, we, we chose a, a location on the table, just say, hey, look at this location 17. Here's the probability that the string I borrowed did not set that bit. Okay, um, so now we're going to go a bit more. Oh, actually, I want to I stop here um, and say, does that formula look familiar? Wait a minute. It kind of looks like we have a 1 minus 1 over something to a power, but the thing we have down here and the thing we are there aren't the same, so it's not exactly the formula for E. But you know, I can go ahead and uh, we can use the same trick we did in the previous video, actually. I'm going to rewrite this as 1 minus 1 over m, and I wish I had m up here, right? Because that, that, I know that formula, that would be nice, but I don't have m up there, I have k. Well, how about m times k over m? Okay, well that's kind of interesting. Okay, so now I go ahead and have that is equal to e to the k over m. So, yeah, um, okay, so that's interesting. That's, again, that's the probability that we chose a particular bit. What's the probability that that bit was not set by uh, anything that I borrow attached to under any of the three hash functions or K hash functions? Okay, or any string that had been added previously. It doesn't need to be my name, might as well be, but okay. Um, okay, so yeah, where are we now? Um, we're at the third step. What is the probability that a certain bit is not set by, gosh, I'm going to take the and over all the previous words that have been entered. I'm going to say, hey, uh, look at this bit here. I want to, what's the probability that it was not set by any of Ibarlin's hash functions and that it wasn't set when we added Radford, any of those hash functions, and when we added whoop to do it wasn't set by any of those hash functions. Okay, well, that's the same thing. That's going to be, hey, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it n times. Okay, so... Uh, oh, sorry, I goofed up, didn't I? There was a minus sign here. So that was a 1 over e, e to the minus 1. So we have e to the minus km here. Um, okay, we'll take this and say, hey, this didn't happen, and it didn't happen n times. I added n things. That's the probability that I already had n words that I added to the table, um, and none of those entries caused a particular bit to be set. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to be looking at this number here, minus k n over m. So raise this to the nth power. And I wrote it as n over m because uh, that's kind of this interesting number, right? That's kind of like the load factor. That's the ratio of the number of items I've added to the number of bits that I set aside for my table. So, And I, I suggested earlier we want to keep that around one-tenth maybe. Um, 
Anyway, it's an interesting fraction. It doesn't surprise me that I can write it to have that fraction appear in the middle of my problem. So, okay. So that's a certain bit wasn't set. Just choose any location. That's the probability that that location hasn't been set by all the things you entered previously. So now, what is the probability that every bit, all three bits, were set? Okay. So I'm asking, hey, is there another word? Uh, is Bartok in this hash table? Uh, what's the probability that look at you know look at h1 of Bartok where that should be set? Hey, what's the probability that that really was set? And the probability that h2 of Bartok was set? And the probability that h3 of Bartok was set? Okay. Well, this is the probability that it wasn't set. So the probability that it was set is this, and we wanted that to happen k times. That is the probability that h1 of Bartok and h2 of Bartok and h3 of Bartok were all set. Okay. So, yeah, not that bad of a formula um, sitting there. We're, by the way, I, I forgot to mention or emphasize uh, that's an approximation that works well if m is large. And again, if m is 100, that's plenty large for this particular approximation, it turns out. So, okay. So this is our probability of a false positive as listed down here in the notes. Okay, so now we can go and actually calculate exact numbers. Notice that it depends on n, m, and k. Uh, and what I think is interesting is increasing k. Uh, does increasing k make this thing get better or worse? It turns out, well, it gets better for a while, but if you start making k too big, it gets worse after a while. So. Um, and if you think about it, it makes sense that that might happen. Um, in general, they say, hey, the, the optimal number of, um, if you look at Wikipedia, the optimal uh, value to use for a K actually sort of depends on what target probability you want to false positives. So exactly what to tune for a K depends on um, uh, what target uh, false. Um, a false positive rate you want. Okay, uh, that should do it.